Much time has been spent exploring what we eat, how much, what kind, the types. But few books explore it from the unique perspective that Faith Delucio's What the World Eats does. For her book, Delucio visited families around the world to observe and photograph what they eat during the course of one week. What resulted was an eye-opening look at not only how much some people eat, but also how little others do. The book begins by exploring the realities of our current eating habits. Luisio points out that many of us are still eating on the three square meals model. The three squares philosophy was based on the agricultural practices of yesteryear. A time when people used a big breakfast to fuel their morning. A filling lunch to push them through the laborsome afternoon. And a hearty supper to reward a job well done. I don't know about you, but I certainly don't do enough physical labor to warrant all that food energy. The next point she focuses on is where your food comes from. Do you know where the bacon from your breakfast came from? How about the grain used to make your cereal? Modern supermarkets rely on an elaborate transportation system to get food to us. You have to know that those bananas you're enjoying aren't coming from anywhere local. It kind of makes you wonder how long some of that food has been hanging around or wonder what's being done to your food to make it last through that transportation process. Three of the families studied were stationed in the good old U.S. of A. Focus is placed on American food choices with schools being right at the center of much of the controversy. Until recently, schools allowed vending machines that sold sugar-laden drinks and snacks. In fact, some schools have more soda machines than bubblers. Next, we move to the land down under, the Australian outback, a place where slaughtering animals and eating them that day is commonplace. A practice that may draw a couple of disgusted looks, but stop and think. Do you know where the meat you eat comes from? How much processing is involved? Are there any chemicals or hormones added? How long has that animal been dead? We come from a hunter-gatherer lifestyle, yet we can't even hunt without a license. Now we almost have to rely on the stores. Think about it, could you live without the grocery store? The final points I wanted to focus on center around a data table I found in the section on the United States. Did you know that annual meat consumption for the average American is 270 pounds? How about that the average caloric intake is 3,760 calories when the recommended daily intake is actually only 2,000? Or how many McDonald's are there in the United States? Would you believe 13,500 and counting? What the world eats certainly had a clear purpose. Luisio does not hide her disgust with the eating practices of our nation. Nor does she smile upon the way that we rely so heavily on the supermarket. Her purpose, I believe, was to open our eyes to these two points, as well as to suggest that we don't need all that we eat to survive happily. I really enjoyed reading this book. Not only were the family photos a unique idea, but they made me think about my own eating habits. I also felt the data shared in the book was valid and shocking in some cases. If you too would like to have such an experience, pick up Faith DeLuisio's What the World Eats. Thank you for listening.